Welcome to the Travel Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Aileen Blanco. I interview successful industry professionals and share my personal journey to becoming a travel agent. The show is for aspiring travel agents and travel professionals at every level. My mission is to uncover the universal keys to thrive in this business. Join me as I take a closer look into the life of a travel agent. I created the Travel Professionals Guide to Podcasting, and I'm going to be hosting one last class this year so that you can start off 2021 right and stay in front of your clients. So if you've been thinking about starting a podcast and it's been your to-do list for a very long time, or you started and you got really overwhelmed, come join the Travel Professionals Guide to Podcasting. If you are looking to stay top of mind and stay in front of your client and attract new ideal clients, this is it. So click the button that says start podcast now or go to thetravelagentpodcast.com and click the course button and all of the information is there. And if you still have questions at the bottom, it says, are you still not sure? We'll get on a call together. I want you to be successful. And you never know, podcasting might just be your thing. So without further ado, we'll get on to the episode. Hello, and welcome to the Travel Agent Podcast. We are back this Thursday with another great guest, and she is going to introduce herself. Hey, how are you? I'm Gabriella. Um, I run two companies that are in the travel space, uh, one focused on helping travel agents sell better, uh, representing uh, really world-class tour operators, amazing hotels, and some tourist boards around the world. And then on the other side of the uh, fence, uh, I plan really immersive travel that really um, allows you know people who are, I call, globally curious to connect with the destination, really feel um, you know the fabric, and really soak up the soul. So it's, it's definitely for the traveler that wants to get out, meet people, and make local connections, um, and really, really change their life through travel. Wonderful. So tell us how you got started in, in both of those businesses. Yeah, well, I was kind of a natural. Um, my, my parents were in the travel industry. My mom and dad worked for an airline way back when. That's actually how they met. So um, we always traveled. Uh, my dad was a tour operator. So it was just, we kind of, you know, grew up not knowing any other way, but just, you know, if there's a chance to hop on a plane, we hopped on a plane. And um, you know, was able to see the world um, starting from an early age. And although I meant to do many other things, I never really thought that I could make a career in travel. You know, I was meant to be an attorney and, or, you know, I wanted to do a translation work and be a diplomat and all these weird things that I, I explored <laughs> and travel just kind of kept calling me back. So I took a job, um, you know, I, I settled on journalism in college. I took a job at a tour operator just in the meantime to sort of pass the time while I figured out what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And it turned into a really beautiful career. So none of it was really planned. I think it just sort of found me. Um, and I discovered that there are many different ways to, to make a really awesome, meaningful living um, in the world of travel. I love it. I love that your family traveled all over. That's hopefully what I plan to give my children, uh, the travel bug. So what, since you've kind of been immersed in it in a while, for a while, what do you wish you would have known when you first started? that would have really helped you kind of elevate your business quicker? Um, you know, I mean, I think I, I, I dove right into it, which I thought might be the best thing to do. You know, I think if you overthink things, that stops people from doing things. So um, if I always, you know, go back, people ask me this a lot, like, what do you wish? I think um, understanding how to manage cash flow is, is a huge uh, adjustment for anyone who's going to start any business, especially in travel, because when you start to plan travel, um, you know, you're working on such a different kind of basis, you know, commissions and things like that. And if you don't really um, structure yourself to be able to account for that and to be able to wait for payments, you know, whereas like a nine to five job gives you that steady paycheck every, <laughs> every week or two or whatever the case, um, you know, it can be a really strange existence. So, you know, working on that and figuring out how to manage, um, you know, having to chase payments, having not, you know, just going without getting paid for a little bit of, uh, you know, a stretch is something I think everybody, no matter what business you're in, it, it's, it's always something advisable. I love that because I was not aware, like I understood, but you don't understand really until you oh, jump. Yeah. <laughs> no, until you like, oh, there's no checks coming. <laughs> That's what happens. 
So what in the beginning is something that you weren't very good at um, and you are an absolute rock star right now? I think, in the, and this is going to sound, you know, because I, I, you know, I think as business owners, we have to be accommodating, but understanding where to draw the line, you know, and understanding, I think, who's serious and who's not, especially as a travel planner. This kind of, it doesn't relate so much to my marketing business, but um, as a travel planner, you can get a lot of people you know, calling you up and just shopping around and, and, and that kind of thing. And you can wind up expending a lot of energy and adding, you know, giving people a lot of your trade secrets um, when they're just kind of, you know, intending on taking those and, and trying to piece it together themselves, which we all know is never a good idea. But some people, some people really believe they know best. And, and that is fine. So I think, you know, you have to get more hard line as far as asking the right questions, um, doing due diligence. Is this person serious? If they're not willing to give me a lot of information about them, how can I serve them kind of thing? And I think, you know, if you have to invest the time um, in, in trying to get to know them, trying to understand their goals rather than just giving a quote, um, because then you can serve them better. And then you also know who's a little bit more serious and who's not going to be just a, a general, you know, kind of uh, bleeding on your resources. Clients, I think, is, is the best thing to do. So in qualifying your clients, um, how long, about how long did it take you to really truly understand who your ideal client was? Uh, you know, I knew who I wanted to go after. I think it's important to draw that up, you know, whether you're making a business plan, like know who you can connect with the best, you know, like I know who I can, I connect best with well with people that I can tell want to travel the way that I do. I can serve anybody, but you know, it's a question of who do I want, who can I serve best? Um, you know, and when people are willing to take those chances and, and have an adventure and dive into something that's unfamiliar, um, you know, and meet locals and, and get out there and taste the food and all of that stuff. Those are generally, you know, that's the, I would say, I hate to use the word avatar. I hate that word, but that kind of is, you know, who I was looking for. And I think, you know, you have to start, you know, crafting your marketing message around that so that you put that out there and you're sort of attracting that, you know, or whereas somebody who just wants to, you know, go to, uh, you know, a, a very overcrowded destination, lay on a beach for a week and, and not do much, that is not really my ideal client. So it doesn't make so much sense to, to pursue that or go further with that because it, it's, it's not going to be something that's going to be interesting to me. A lot of people can do it. They can easily book it online as well. Um, and that sometimes just, you know, it doesn't bode well for, for trying to secure a client for life for me, but everybody's different. That's just, you know, that's how I, I go about it. And I think that's important to, to, to everyone to understand, like you have to figure out what is best for you, what someone else is doing may not work for you. And so, uh, I love that you were able to figure that out and, and navigate through that process. When you said crafting your marketing message, did your marketing company come before or after? like you were full-time in your own travel business? It was well before, you know, this, this sort of was like a spinoff, if you will. You know, I was, the, the thing is that, you know, I was doing the marketing for so long and the sales and marketing and, and promotions and PR to an extent. And so many people, I think this happens to just to, you know, any kind of avid traveler, people always go to you for advice, you know, and say, oh gosh, you know, I was thinking about doing this. What could you recommend? And then you wind up just out of like the sheer excitement of it, planning someone's whole trip and then handing it over, you know, <laughs> and sort of saying, wow, you know what I mean? I, I, this was a lot of fun. I did put time into it. I really, you know, want to make their trip the best. And then I sort of like, you know, the light bulb went off and I said, well, I probably could figure out a way to monetize this. And, um, and so it became, yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of how that was, how that progression worked. So tell me, what is the, the biggest thing that you've gained um, from working in the travel industry? Um, connections, you know, and relationships really are um, everything, I think, in any business, but in the travel industry, if you've been to, you know, events and you, you've met suppliers and all, we just have a sort of a language and a, and a heart all of our own. I think every industry does, but it's, you know, I, I can only speak for this one because I'm in it. Um, it's just a human connection. And I think that that's why COVID has been so painful for so many of us, aside from financial issues. Um, you know, we live to connect with others and we live to travel and experience other cultures. And so do our guests. And we all have not been able to do that. You know, and Zoom is just not the same. <laughs> and, and I think like it's, you know, we, you've also 
at times like this, you learn how important strong relationships are with hotels, with, with on-site companies, because a lot of people got stuck. A lot of people, you know, were potentially going to, to have some, some difficulty, either canceling things or getting home. And, you know, you, you could see very quickly who was going to step up and who was going to be in your corner. So um, I think relationships have always been important. But, you know, when, you, when something like this happens and you see the true colors of a company, um, you know, that, that, that carries for whether it's positive or negative, you see that and it's, it really helps you be able to move forward in the right way. Um, so speaking about COVID, how have you um, gone about planning for the future and kind of just getting through this in general? Uh, you know, it's, it's been really difficult for everybody. Um, you know, for us, we had to realize that there, there's a couple of things. We couldn't continue to market the same way because it would have been highly insensitive. You know, the world is, is starting to get their feet and don't, you know, under this and doesn't know how to how to handle this and we could not be aggressively promoting hey go go hop on a plane you know when we didn't even know what would happen when you went to the grocery store so it was we had to take a whole pause um you know and then i think you know what we did is we took the approach of, of just a dream initiative and just keeping people thinking about the future like teach them things have you know especially when we market to travel agents they have they're going to have downtime so let's have them use this time and let's work really hard to help them get educated on certain places let's amp up our live events like uh, let's focus on educational classes that we can do that are not boring webinars anymore and, and keep people engaged so that they can be experts for when demand returns and then on the consumer side we really just had to just keep reassuring people that the world is still there it's not going away. You can't go now, but you know, all of these Machu Picchu is still there. You know, <laughs> the Colosseum is still there. We'll be waiting for you. Um, you know, we just have to get under control with this. And I think that's kind of where we have been hovering, you know, like keeping people dreaming and giving them something exciting to, to think about versus what they couldn't do, you know, and that, that was sort of how we handled it. I love that so much. Um, keep them dreaming. Awesome. Well, my favorite question always is what do you have that you are super excited about in life and in business coming up? Oh, gosh. Um, well, you know, we've had to pivot and really kind of change the way that we do things. We used, used to do a lot of live events and bring travel agents together with our clients and always be out and meeting people and we just can't do it. So we've um, transitioned to a lot of unique live events and TV shows and things that keep agents interested and consumers too. So we are, you know, working hard on those. We've partnered with the right tech people and we say like, okay, this is it for the foreseeable future. We can't have big gatherings. We can't have conferences. So let's bring people together in a unique way that doesn't, um, that, that doesn't require such a drain on their time, keep things punchy, quick, give them tastes of things and keep the information fresh. So that's kind of where we've been focusing. And it's exciting because with every event we do, we get better and better and we learn more and sometimes we make mistakes sometimes big sometimes small and, and we just keep learning um you know to figure out what's going to suit our audience the best well you have been an amazing guest in that short period of time i feel like you've given us so much to think about um and so many helpful tips i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come onto our show and if you want any more information about gabriella her information will be on the travel agent podcast backslash blog and uh we we look forward to kind of following your journey and seeing all the things that you have planned for 2021 thank you so much thank you for joining the travel agent podcast don't forget to subscribe rate and review visit the travelagentpodcast.com for more information about today's episode and other travel agent resources be sure to tune in every thursday for new episodes until next time continue to build a travel business you love